So we've seen lots of really cool videos on Instagram and social media, people jumping rope, doing some really crazy things, and you were motivated enough to go get yourself a jump rope. Excellent choice. But now, how are you gonna use it safely and effectively and get the most out of your jump rope workouts? My name is Levi James and I'm with Element Athletic and I'm gonna show you how to jump rope safely, effectively, and make it really fun. First thing you gotta do is figure out if you've got the right length of rope for yourself. Now depending on your height, and depending on what rope you've bought, they usually come in standard sizes of either seven, eight, or nine foot lengths. And most of them, pretty much all of them are adjustable. So what you wanna do is step on the rope with one foot. All right. Turn the handles upside down, and you're looking for three different measurements depending on your level of technique and skill. If you're just starting out, you probably want the handles to be up a little bit higher towards the top of the shoulder. Once you get more experienced, your cord length is gonna decrease so that the rope moves a little bit faster. So the next measurement will be mid-chest, and the next one will be lower part of the chest. Now this is mainly for people who are jumping very fast, who are very experienced jumpers. So I like sort of the mid-chest area here. Works for my height, works for my skill level as well. The next thing you're gonna figure out is do you have the right length of handles for your jumping skill level? I like them to be about nine to 10 inches long. It gives me lots of extra leverage to help move the rope around and it gives you a little extra space when you're starting to perform more complicated tricks. When you're holding the handles, you wanna make sure that you don't go up towards the attachment point because then you're really losing that whole advantage that you have from having a longer, longer lever. You're gonna rest it in the center of the hand we're not gonna death grip it like we're trying to turn coal into a diamond. You just want a nice light grip on there so you're not wasting energy by just gripping onto the handle. All right, next thing we're gonna talk about is we call jump posture. Basically standing straight up and down like six o'clock to make sure that we're not leaning forward or leaning back and putting extra undue stress on the knees and the ankles. So just like I said, chest up, shoulders back, nice and relaxed, knees slightly soft. Next thing you do is even just work without the rope before. Just see what it feels like, just start bouncing. Nice and easy. Remember, the rope is only a quarter inch thick, sometimes usually less, so you don't really need to jump that high. If we end up jumping way too high, as we can see, it gets very stressful in the knees, very stressful in the ankles. So we're just gonna start just doing a little basic shadow jumping right here. From the side and from the back. Nice and easy. Now we're fortunate enough in here to be working with a nice soft surface so it actually voids quite a bit of the shock. We try and avoid jumping outside on concrete because that does create a lot of extra stress again on the knees and ankles. And if we start getting into that territory, we get into the dreaded shin splints. And if you've ever had shin splints, you know how horrible it is and how painful it can be and how it will definitely deter your further training with the jump rope. So we've got, nice, got our nice soft surface here. So let's actually pick up the rope again. So next thing we talk about is the timing, the timing of the jump and the rotation of the rope. Because obviously, if you don't jump over the rope, you will jump into the rope or the rope will whip you in the ankles or in the back of the legs or the knees. Not always the best thing to have happen, but it's inevitable, it will happen. However, so now that we've got our rope, we're gonna continue the shadow jumping. We're just gonna rotate the rope in your dominant hand. So I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna put both handles in my right hand and just start moving it forwards. Nice and easy. When we're looking at the rotation, we're thinking about pushing the rope down. We're not pulling it up and around, we're actually just pushing it down. If you put enough energy into this part, the rope will naturally pull itself back around. So the only time you need to put effort in is by pushing the thumbs down, right? And now we time the jump with that. So we're doing what we were doing before, right? Making sure that the rope is making contact with the ground, but not too far out in front, or else it's gonna throw off the timing. Okay, now we're getting used to this. That's not so bad. All right, now we're gonna get really brave. We're actually gonna jump over the rope now. So as I said before, you will hit yourself with a rope. So don't think it has to be perfect every single time. You just get used to it. <laughs> so you're gonna start with the rope behind your knees. Hands up, just like so. We're just gonna pull the rope over once and jump over it, nice and easy. Pretty simple, huh? And this is where it all starts. All the fancy moves, all the fancy tricks and skills all start with the basic bounce step. Two feet, leave the ground, and come back at the same time. Nice and easy, not jumping too high, and not landing too hard. From the side, jump. Nice and easy. Okay, so also keep in mind, throughout this video, if you can't quite master the skill right away, that's totally fine. Pause the video here, practice the move a few times, then hit play again and continue following along. So what we're doing now is we're gonna do through our five, 10, 15, 20 to 30. What that means 
is we're gonna stop after five reps. We're gonna reassess our technique and then modify the technique to make it more efficient, a little bit safer. So most people, when they start jumping, are gonna jump way too high. At that height, I should be able to get three rotations underneath or the coveted double under or triple under that we like to hear about. So starting with just five simple jumps. One, two, three, four, five, stop. Okay? If you notice that you're jumping too high, press pause in the video and try this a few more times until you get to five without jumping on the rope and without jumping too high. Okay, next we go to 10, nice and simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 10. Perfect. All right, we're gonna turn to the side here, because this is my good side, and we're gonna do 15. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 15, and stop. What you're also gonna notice at this point is that you forget to breathe. <laughs> so that's why it's very important to have little pauses in between these fives, because it's not just the combination of the rotation of the rope and the jump, but you also have to breathe as well. And we're gonna go up to 20. Let's we'll see how you do here. Ready, 20. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Good, all right. Like I said before, if you're having trouble when you get to 20, press pause on here, try it a few more times and make sure you <sighs> give yourself a chance to breathe. All right, let's go to 25 if you've made it this far. Ready, 25. Ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty, one, two, three, four, and five. All right. So again, at this point in time, you're going to start to feel a little fatigue in the legs, a little fatigue in the calves. That is completely and totally normal, especially if you're just starting out. So again, take a bit of a break, shake the legs out a little bit, relax, shake out the shoulders, <sighs> take a breath, congratulate yourself for choosing one of the best and most effective exercise programs in the world. So now we're gonna go up to 30. If you've made it to 25, we're definitely going to 30 jumps. Ready? Here we go. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, until you jump for about three or four sets. Again, give your legs a shake out. Make sure you give yourself time to breathe, get a sip of water, and we'll get back into it. Okay, so you've been practicing your 30 jumps. Now, your first goal is to do 100 jumps unbroken, meaning you're not gonna hit yourself with the rope and you're not gonna jump on the rope itself. Are you ready for this one? Okay, if you've got your 30 down, we're going right to 100. Ready? Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 60, 70, 80, 90, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, hundo! Right on guys, if you're able to follow along with that, that's fantastic, it means you are this much closer to mastering the basic bounce step. All right, so congratulations if you got through 100. You do have another goal, and that is gonna be 500 unbroken jumps. Once you can do that, you'll start to see the effectiveness of a longer jump rope set. Like I said before, if you've been videotaping yourself or jumping in a mirror, always take time to readjust the technique, minimize the jump height, and maximize the rotation of the wrists, and that's gonna make sure the rope moves nice and quick and smooth underneath you. Till then, guys, keep practicing your hundreds, until you get to that 500, and then we'll see you on the next video where we're gonna teach you the alternating foot step. All right, jumpers, good luck, and we'll see you on the next one.